welcome to Barton's Takeout, your daily serving of art. I'm Robin Craren, Collections Research Coordinator at the Barton's Foundation. Today, I'm going to talk to you about this painting right here. Um, it's on the south wall of room five. And I want you to remember uh, the size of this painting when we, when we look at it a bit further. So um, I told you to think about the size. So even though it's a very small painting, it really kind of gives off this sense of monumentality. Um, and it has this really interesting framing device, um, which is very architectural. It has these columns here and, and this framing. And we're seeing it from kind of off to the left from a particular kind of vantage point as if we're supposed to be seeing it from, a, from that viewpoint. Um, and part of that is because this uh, painting is actually a modello, which is a small oil sketch for a larger tapestry. Um, it would have actually been shown in reverse of this. So um, this figure right here would have actually been on this side and these would have been over here. Um, tapestry was one of the most luxurious and prized art forms during this period. Um, and it was far costlier to create than painting or sculpture. Um, so therefore it um, in some ways wasn't as common. And I think we kind of forget about it now because of how much they have faded over time um, or are in much poor condition, more poorer conditions than um, their painting or sculpture counterparts. Um, but they would have been these really vibrant, um, be beautiful representations of um, a beautiful art. Um, so like I said, this is a modello for a tapestry, which is um, part of a larger series that was commissioned by the Infanta Isabel Clara Eugenia. She was a Spanish princess, but at the time of the commission, she was um, the governor general of the Spanish Southern Netherlands. She commissioned Peter Paul Rubens, who was a Flemish painter and who was her court painter to her and before that her and her husband. He was also a trusted diplomat of her and he was a knight of the Spanish crown. Um, he devised the plans of these tapestries in his uh, studio in Antwerp, and then um, it, they were then woven in Brussels, which was her um, where she uh, her court was. Um, and they were woven by the prominent workshops of Jan Ross the first and Jakob Hobels the uh, second. Isabel um, gave these tapestries as a gift to the Franciscan Monasterio de las Descalces de Ares, which is the convent of the Barefoot Royals, a very funny name, um, in Madrid in the 1620s. Um, she commissioned it probably as early as 1622. She grew up in the Spanish court. Um, she was born in 1566, the eldest daughter of King Philip II, who was the Spanish king, and his third his third wife, uh, Elizabeth de Valois. Uh, the king and the royal family actually attended mass in the convent, the church of the convent, um, which was really kind of treated as the royal chapel. The convent itself was home to many widowed noble women, noble women um, and uh, which you should take note of and, and remember later when we talk a bit, a bit more about that. Um, so she was actually married rather late in life to her cousin, the Archduke Albert of Austria, he was the fourth son of the Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian II. Um, when she married him, she brought with her as the dowry, the Southern Netherlands, um, for which she was then appointed co-sovereign with her husband. Um, this was part of a strategy um, to calm unrest in the region. Um, Spain was Catholic and the crown um, wanted to protect and maintain control of the territories uh, from the Protestants who were in the North. Um, so she was really seen as this defender of the Catholic faith um, in the region. Um, and it was a particularly turbulent time in Europe between Protestants and Catholics. Um, it was a period of the counter-reformation, so the Catholics um, countering what the Protestants had said before. Um, but her father put a clause in the dowry. Um, if she and her husband did not produce an heir, um, the territory would go back to Spanish control. So. Um, and around this time, when she became uh, the co-governor the co of um, Spanish Southern Netherlands, um, Rubens actually became her court painter. So he entered into her life around the time when, um, when she became a ruler. Um, 
she enjoyed a pretty uh, peaceful rule until 1621, her, when her brother, who was the king of Spain, died, um, and a treaty which had um, put a stop to conflict between the Protestants and Catholics ended. Um, and then later that year, her husband died. So if, as you remember, um, the control of the region um, went back to Spanish control. So the new king of Spain, who was her nephew, Philip IV, um, instructed her to stay there. Um, she actually had requested to return to Madrid, and, and she wanted to join the order of the convent, the um, Descalzas Reales. Um, but he told her to remain there as governor general of the Spanish Southern Netherlands. Um, and this was really done for for a specific reason. She was actually relatively popular as a ruler, um, and it was a like I said, a time of particular unrest. So she was seen as an important figure in maintaining Spanish and Catholic control of the region. So instead, since she wasn't able to actually return, she um, she commissioned this tapestry series, um, to which is can really be seen as a, a showcase of her um, devotion to the Catholic faith, um, and it being in a church, uh, the church of the convent, which she would have um, liked to have joined, and which her the royal family went to. It was, a, it was like a, a symbol of her as well. Um, she actually did um, join a secular Franciscan order um, and wore uh, a habit, like wore the um, clothing of a, of a nun the rest of her life. Um, so she was a very pious woman. Um, so this series uh, is called The Triumph of the Eucharist, um, and its imagery glorifies the Catholic Church. It, it really sought to express the Church's triumph over heresy, um, a major theme of the Counter-Reformation period. Um, they reflect, they really reflect this dynamic relationship between Isabel and her co court painter Rubens, um, and Rubens did a really beautiful job of, of showcasing um, the imagery and the iconography of these scenes. Um, they were the tapestries would have been hung in the church. Um, it was a rather austere church at the time, and so it would have decorated the church during Eucharistic feasts, um, and they would have been hung on the walls, likely. Um, and they would have like shown these really beautiful figural compositions, like this one, um, and these illusionist in these illusionistic architectural frames. Um, and they would have been on multiple levels, most likely. The main tapestries of the series, um, for which this one is not one of those, um, it's a smaller, it's part of a smaller series within the series. So the largest ones were over 16 feet tall and 24 feet long, so very big. Um, and there were 11 of those. And they would have covered the side walls of the church and possibly the presbytery. Um, and they had a lower row and a, and a top row, like I said. The lower row features Tuscan columns and had a more um, level viewpoint. So it had the um, has the implication that they were meant to be seen kind of more at eye level or close to that. And they usually they included Old Testament um, prefigurations of the Eucharist. The upper level had a vantage point which suggested that you were meant to see it from below, um, and those featured Solomonic columns. Uh, they had really dramatic scenes of the victory of truth over heresy and the victory of the Eucharist over idolatry, among others. So they were these very triumphant um, scenes. So on the wall opposite the altar, there would have been five smaller scenes. Um, they also had upper and lower registers featuring the same Tuscan and Solomonic columns. Um, but this one um, is, they think, probably would have been um, hung above those, so kind of like at the center. It has different columns, um, not quite Tuscan, not quite Solomonic. Um, that differ from the other ones in this in that smaller series. And so that kind of suggests that um, it would have been above. There's also a um, sketch of by Rubens of what he we assume he would have wanted them all to look like. This one is not shown in it, but the scene right below where they think it may have um, been has these same columns. Um, <clears throat> these scenes show sacred and secular figures um, in adoration of the Eucharist. 
Um, so this painting uh, shows, let's talk about it and let's dig a, dig a bit deeper. Um, this actually shows the King David. Um, he is an Old Testament figure. You'll know him from the story of David and Goliath um, when he uh, when he killed Goliath during a battle with the Philistines um, when he was in his youth. Um, but he was also the second king of Israel. Um, the first king, Saul, um, was showing, was, was failing um, in the eyes of the prophet Samuel, so he actually anointed um, David as the next king of Israel. Um, but uh, that happened much later in life after the, um, after his triumph over Goliath um, and a series of events. Um, David is often shown with a harp or a lyre, like he is here. And that's because he um, was said to have calmed uh, King Saul's mental and emotional instability by playing this musical instrument because he was um, well-versed in, in playing it in playing musical instruments. Um, but he also angered Saul. Um, Saul uh, became jealous of David, and in a rather long and elaborate cat and mouse game, he um, tried, he chased and tried to kill David. Um, but he eventually saw that David was loyal to him and the dropped the endeavor. Um, and David, like I said, would later become the second king after Saul and his sons died. Um, and we all we will see this crown over here, which is another signifier of. Uh, the fact that this is King David. But we don't see him norm as he normally would be um, with uh, Saul. Normally when he's playing the instrument, he's shown with King Saul. So he's shown kind of playing the instrument for him, like in that story that I told you. Um, but here he's shown presumably in heaven because they're all sitting on um, these clouds. And he's shown with angels and they are holding um, these sheets of music and really just celebrating um, him playing this, in this this instrument. And like I said, they're framed within this really interesting um, architectural space. And it's part of um, this larger series, not as elaborate as some of the other tapestries within the series, but still very important and part of this um, story of the triumph of the Eucharist. Um, and it's really can the whole series can be seen as um, as a, a representation of an important act of patronage by um, Isabella, or Isabel, um, one that shows that she was her true devotion to the Catholic Church. Um, so I hope you t in, uh, enjoyed today's takeout. That's it for today. Um, to get more daily servings of art, please subscribe to our channel. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thank you. I'm Tom Collins, Neubauer Family Executive Director of the Barnes Foundation. I hope you enjoyed Barnes Takeout. Subscribe and make sure your post notifications are on to get daily servings of art. Thanks for watching and for your support of the Barnes Foundation.